what Line we're doing up. today Wild is so we've up. been talking about the human design body graph. Everyone's got a type, everyone's got ways, things we read out. Now we're looking at all these inner authorities and um, we're doing the spleen tonight. So what we're gonna, 10% of you in the audience are gonna truly understand and hear and be like, that might be me because what we're gonna do is bring it to life. So your authority comes from some center usually, right? And mm -hmm. this particular splenic authority comes from the spleen. That's why we have splenic center. And a question that can help activate this authority type when they are in a section to you know, make a decision is, does this feel right? And their timing is immediate. Like, yeah. Right. yeah. And so when I think about our inner authority, I call it our inner GPS. It's our guidance system. This really tells us what action, because our authority tells us how to take action. And then our, uh, I'm sorry, our strategy tells us how to take action. And then our inner authority tells us what action is correct to take. Now, when I think about inner authority, everything about human design comes back to the physical body. And so this is a center on the body graph, but all of those centers on the body graph actually represent real places inside of the body. And the spleen is deeply connected to our immune system and our lymphatic system. It's the center that keeps us safe. It keeps us safe mm. from viruses and bacteria. It keeps us healthy and alive. And so, um, yeah. So yes to all of that stuff. And I don't want to say anything more. It's about the immediacy of it too. And mm -hmm. folks should start to recognize the spleen is a more trust. And I are always joking about sometimes it's the cat on the hot tin roof thing, you know, cause it turned left. I mean, turn right. I mean, I liked it. I don't like it now, you know, yeah. whatever. In um, the now, in, in the, the moment. Now. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, and almost bringing it back into the physical body that your, your immune system is always turned on. In mm. a moment, you could have access to a virus or a bug or a bacteria, and your spleen is going to defend itself, right? Everything is right here, right here, right now, right? So, yeah, yeah the immediacy yeah, of it. exactly. And then there's also the bit um, that, you know, other than the immune system part is like a physical safety thing. It's like, yeah. oh, don't go down that alleyway. Um, my spidey sense right. is tingling. Yes. The spleen 100%. is the home of that sixth sense. The yes. spleen is the power the home the awareness the the piercing ability into our sixth sense that's how i would call the spleen yeah mm. so mm, juicy like, right so like tressa and uh danny said right it's in the now but the, the fun part is there's no like warning voice or pre-warning voice that says i'm coming now it just shows up it shows up hey uh do that thing or hey don't do that thing and it just leaves so if you weren't paying attention in the moment, that voice is not coming. Right. Well, and the spleen really likes quiet. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's something that I had to learn in my own experiment. When the mind is very active, it's hard to tell the difference. Is this my spleen or is this my mind? And so very often, if I'm confused, I will have to take a few minutes and find a little bit of quiet as a manifestor, find some peace. Mm -hmm. So that I can feel into, you know, and the spleen speaks in different ways. So, you know how I mentioned that it, it gives you that sense that like, oh, like maybe don't do this. Sometimes that can lead into if, you know, there's, there's different vibrations for all the authorities and all the centers, right? So you have a high one and you have a low one and the low one for the splenic vibration can lead to anxiety. So that's the only thing we didn't talk about. So the high well, one is like healthy, but yes, tell yeah, me your yeah. experience. Yeah. So the splenic center is a fear center. There is a, mm -hmm. there is a deep binary between fear and trust, between safety and health. So most people with a splenic authority, whether that's a manifest or a projector are wrapped up in the not self theme of chronic fear and uh, control. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody talks about fear with an open spleen, but people forget that when you have a defined spleen, you can be consistently wrapped up in Ooh. fear. Now, open spleens will amplify fear. Mm -hmm. So they're feeling it more than the defined spleen, but the defined spleen. So what will happen for a splenic being is that they learn at a very young age that they can't trust 
their splenic intuitions because it's not common. It's not normal. Right. Most people don't have it. Most people don't operate that way. And so they will then let the mind make, just talk them out of their splenic awareness, splenic intuition. Now, here's the thing about the mind. The mind thinks that if it can control something, you will be safe. And so that's the old meet, way. It's the old way. We spoke a lot about this. Yep. Yes, it's the seven centered way. And so you will meet most splenic beings who are deeply conditioned and they try to plan, prepare, predict, control, mm. force because the spleen, because they're so obsessed with the idea of safety. Ah, that is fascinating hearing. And the fear on, on, yeah, the fear on the other <laughs> side of that safety and, and, and along with it is all of its open spleen compadres, because I believe the defined spleen is about 44% of the population, something like that. And the um, and so then the rest of us with it open have that amplifying thing, ending up holding on to things, sometimes trying to be twice as spontaneous. A splenic being knows when to be spontaneous because they are it when mm -hmm. it happens. And, and suddenly, you know, us openly can, we can want that even more and then start holding on to things that we just didn't want to. So it all it all comes together in a soup. Basically how to correctly make decisions. If so, when a decision is, you know, brought up, you tune into your body. So like Tressa said, maybe go in a place that's quiet. <laughs> no, maybe not in a busy street with lots of people. Not ideal. Where, where your right. initial instinct is your truth. The initial instinct is mm -hmm. the tooth. And so does it feel right or wrong? And then a clear answer means it's time to act. A clear answer has to be seen. No clear answer means it's no for now. Um, a decision may come up again later. It will come up again later, uh, mostly. Uh, feeling unsure, but I still, um, it still feels right to you. Does it feel right to you? You'll, you know, you'll know in a moment and basically ultimately ask yourself, does this feel right? Does this feel okay? This feel good mm -hmm. for you. The the unsureness, even if it feels right, that is just a possibility that you could be just feeling fear. So, you know, your mind is again, you're going into your not self, like your body's saying, Yeah, this is right. Your mind's like, but what but 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 right. <laughs> but this doesn't make sense, but I don't understand it. But why would I do that? But this is stupid, you know. No, you guys have to understand that. And I, we have to learn it. We have to conceptually grasp something before we can turn it into practical application. But these steps one through seven happen in two seconds. Wow. When you're, when you know, when you have a clinic <laughs> authority, crazy. it's, it's a no, no, this is the truth that I have learned in my personal human design experiment. Half of the time, my body moves itself. Half of the time when a decision arises, tune into your body, my body is already 15 steps moving into the thing that it is already doing before my mind even catches in to what I'm, I'm a manifester, I'm pure action, mm -hmm. right? I will be all the way to the door and then I'll realize like, wait a second, what, is, what am I, what am I doing? Okay, this is, yes, body, we may do this right now. Okay, right? And so- That's and, and, incredible. I, I can't relate at all as <laughs> the when, emotional when, wave. Yeah. When you learn to let yourself do that for a very long time as a conditioned manifester, I would hold my body back. Oh. Right? I would feel the instinct to move, but I wouldn't let myself take movement because, again, there's fear. Somebody's going to judge me. I'm going to get in trouble. Somebody's not going to like that I'm being disruptive. Somebody's not going to like that I'm using my voice. Somebody's not going to like that I'm being loud. Right? All of those manifestor wounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. And then, you know, your initial instinct is your truth. This is something that Danny taught me in the very beginning of learning human design. Your truth is your true self theme. So when my initial instinct brings me peace, I know that that's coming from my spleen. Yeah. When I'm satisfied and have, I can tell I'm satisfied by the passage of time, forgetting about it. When I've not noticed, and, and and you know what? I'm going to make a statement. I imagine this is true for all of humanity, but for generators, I can speak for this has got to be true. As soon as they're busy, they're, they're in a sense, they're transcending time because it's just, we don't know. And then I remember back all the times I was little and the day would fly by if we were having fun. It would always end too soon. Yeah. Always. Wrapped up yeah. in satisfaction. If you are a splenic projector, 
And that splenic awareness in the now brings you, makes you feel appreciated. If you decide to, you know, accept somebody's invitation and you feel appreciation through that acceptance, that means that that invitation was correct for you to. Now I say acceptance, I say appreciation because I hate the word success. Mm. I have worked with yeah. so many projectors yeah. and yeah. projectors. It doesn't feel like success. It feels like I feel appreciated. I feel wanted. I feel yeah. seen. It feels like appreciation, right? And so again, you know, always honoring. Uh, and then, and then you guys are right because sometimes in the moment, there is a little like back and forth between the mind and the body and the spleen is always part of the body, right? That's what our inner authority is. That's what our design is. And so sometimes sitting with it because there's always another now and there's always another now. Sometimes that now passes and you don't get another shot at it, but more times than not, there is another now and you can lean in a little bit deeper. Now we're gonna get into the conditioning of this authority. Which we've been yeah. talking about already. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. Can you can you read them? Re just read them down, Moana. Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, Tressa mentioned this a little bit. It's it, it, it just comes in in flashes, right? So someone might perceive you as unreliable. So then you're like, no, 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 I need to be consistent. I need to be stable. If I uh, rely on my spleen, that isn't, you know, on a timer it just shows up when it shows up so that's a big conditioning hesitancy to um rely on one's own judgment i'm going to do a couple anxiety about uncertain outcomes or potential failures self-doubt and feelings of inadequacy and various inadequacies and fears um preferring safety over over taking chances you were speaking to that tressa mm -hmm. um experiencing imposter syndrome in leadership or teaching and sometimes in entrepreneurship in various roles yeah yeah and what all of these bullet points have in common is the aspect of trust underneath it uh, yeah i don't trust, trust myself yeah 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 i don't trust myself to make the right decision i don't trust life that that the random decision i'm making is actually going to catch me you know it, think it, about it yes because if the spleen just spoke and it speaks softly and it can only speak the once even if it's going to yeah. come back it's still the once that means if you missed it you're left only with the not self mind for the next yes. few seconds potentially right yes. and so ultimately Absolutely. yes holy yeah. cow that's the, the 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 concept of faith has a whole new meaning when yes. you have a splenic authority, this is, and, and, you know, it's interesting because me and Danny talk sometimes about how there are quite a bit of similarities between having a sacral authority and a splenic yeah, authority, I right? Was gonna say both, that. right? We're both kind of like squirrels, especially manifesting generators, right? Like, <laughs> oh, over here, over here. But, but there's not even a guttural response with the spleen. Right. It takes an immense amount of faith in yourself in mm. order uh, i'll give you an example i'll give it this is a, this is a horrible ex example because we're potty training a five-year-old autistic child i don't know if you guys have ever experienced that it's horrific don't recommend and i'm downstairs working on a post i'm on my computer and i'm mid-sentence and i get this overwhelming shut it down stop typing shut it down and my mind goes I'm in the middle of my sentence. I don't want to do that. Let me just, let me just finish typing. And I let my mind win. I did not honor my splenic authority. And two minutes later, my child comes down with poop on his hands. And yeah, you missed a storm. I, I, I could have prevented a shit storm, right. but, but right. because I didn't have faith in that intuition in the now, do you see? And so yeah. it, it, it's it's sometimes and it happens like that. And then sometimes that still small voice will come out a few times yep. and give me a little tell bit of a about, buffer. Yeah. Tell more about the repetition of it coming out. Ra would always say this thing. I know he had a spleen in his body graph. He could speak intelligently to it. However, at the same time, right, there was he had a defined spleen, right? Yeah. He was a yeah. splenic. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. The, obviously. Oh, okay. And I just I'm like, I can't remember. I thought he was an believe... ego manifester. Well, well they're all is. ego manifestors. <laughs> if you got ego... a defined ego, you get you're an ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so he had a defined spleen and a defined ego. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the inner authority and is still the, 
the spleen, yeah. but that it would come back. And I, I always envision the spleen an aware spleen where it's communion and cooperating with its uh, uh, supposed operator backseat driver that yeah. will come back maybe multiple times because you're, you're in the same situation. It's like, no, no, dude, it keeps coming back slightly different, but it could be rattling at you at times. Yeah. Is that well, sometimes, true? sometimes the thing that's going to happen is going to happen now, like right. the poop thing. Right. And then sometimes yep. the thing that's going to happen <clears throat> is going to happen in a week or it's going to happen in a month or it's going to happen oh, and it's gearing you up to be ready, to be ready for the thing that you need to be ready, you know, to that you don't know for. what it is yet. And right. You don't know what it is. Yeah. But you, but, but your spleen is saying you better hop on board and start taking action in order to prepare for the, the concept. And, and me and Danny talk about this all the time. The concept of treating your body like a partner not yep. a slave not a slave is it's given me the ability to communicate with my spleen directly because what i will do knowing i'm a splenic authority i will stop in the moment because my spleen talks to me but i've started talking back to my spleen i will stop right. sometimes in the moment and i will say okay body what do we need right now and then i'll just get quiet and my body will tell me or it will show me or it will move me in, in some ways. And so I think that the more you become aware with this living, breathing consciousness that is the vehicle, yes. it is a con, it's vastly different than it's our personality so important. consciousness. Yes. Right? It, it's, it has its own it's, awareness fully, it and, fully wa awareness. and it wants to survive. It wants to live. It wants it, to get this material plane just right. It, it wants to be fine. It wants to have a party. <laughs> yeah. And now there, and there's Tressa and then there's Tressa's body. Right. What does Tressa think that it, the right thing is and what does the body want? And when I start to honor my body in that way, I've learned that not only are my splenic in, intuitions, my splenic knowings louder, but I can then relinquish mental control and give it up and be like, okay, tell, just tell me what you, just tell me what to do. What do you want? <laughs> and nine times out of 10, it says, close your damn eyes. You're freaking tired. Nine times out of ten, that's what it says to me. You wow. actually brought us right to our next slides. Yeah, of course we that. did. <laughs> that's how we did, right? Nat naturally. <laughs> naturally. So this, so Tressa yeah. basically, you know, bullet trained us through the tips for how to get better <laughs> <laughs> using your spleen. So you know, yeah. Tressa mentioned it over and over again, we go into our not soft mind overthinking. So when this happens, one of the tricks you can use, we talked about this before, is visualizing a white light coming down through the top of your head, covering your body and, you know, taking a deep breath and letting your body lead, like Tressa already mentioned, right? And Another thing uh, that's really great is coming back to your body is using your five senses. You know, oh, what, do, what am I smelling right now? Oh, I yeah. see, you know, this giant pile of hay. That's a mess. That's actually true. I have three rabbits. So I basically live in a barn. <laughs> um, you know, using all your senses to like basically get out of your head and get back into your body. This is mentioned over and over again. You know, act promptly. Like this was a great example I love this one. You yeah. should have closed that laptop. Just do it. And it was just like a small split second voice, super fast. Just do it. Don't question it. Don't think about it. Just go ahead and do the thing. It could be something and as well instead of area. Instead of, you know what, instead of reframe, uh, I would rephrase this. It says, um, refrain from questioning your certainty. And, and instead of certainty, it would be just uh, questioning your instincts and your intuitions, really, because you're not certain yet certainty has nothing to do with this thing. The only certainty that certainty has anything to do with is the certainty that you should certainly should be listening. Um, <laughs> is what I'm thinking. But well, anyways, that was the yeah. most Danny thing I've ever heard Danny say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that should Sorry. be a quote somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, so but grateful you, you got you, it. Go back and you listen to it. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. He said it exactly right. Like, Yeah, I did. They only, they only ever come out right. They never repeat right. That's, you know. What'd you say? Don't ask. Uh, yeah. Don't, no. Watch the yeah. replay. 
Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to yeah, get yeah. that cord again and watch the replay. But yes, I love, I love, I love the idea of going back and connecting with all of your different senses because, again, everything about human design is about the physical body and the senses that we have—the smell, taste, touch. Right? Where the spleen is connected to all of those systems, symptoms because it's uh, connected to the lymphatic system. But the sixth sense of intuition the energetic connection of a spleen, the psychic intuition that the spleen is connected to is also one of our senses. And that's one of the senses that the doctors and the, you know, Western medicine doesn't really connect the dogs with. Yeah. But, (laughs) but when you, yeah, but as a splenic being, when you smell something and it doesn't smell right, your immune system, your physical body is saying to you, "Uh uh-uh, don't put that thing in my mouth. Right. When you hear something and it sounds off and then you think about some of the gates in the spleen, the gates connected to the eyes and the nose and the tastes and the right, the smelling, right? Gate 44, I smelled a rat. You know what I mean? All of those gates are connected to the actual senses. And so that is such a beautiful exercise for splenic beans to connect to and making sure that they're tuning into their sixth sense the psychic sense, gate 57, whether they have it or not, the sense of actual intuition. Oh my God. The spleen is the oldest awareness. Sorry, go ahead, Melina. No, no, that was chilling. What Tressa just said, yeah, no, that the spleen, it being our oldest, oldest awareness, um, Mm, this thing that's in every reptile, it's in anything basically with a heartbeat at this point. And this spleen has been around for so long that it is in tune with forces greater than we can yet measure or write down or whatever, like you were saying, Western, you know, tend to ignore it. At the same time, um, since it's been around so long, think about it. I, I like to describe it as what you just described. I say it has this uncanny capacity to see a half inch beyond the veil, to see a foot beyond the veil, to see a minute into the future, or sometimes just a moment into the future. Just it is literally past the ring, past not of where we stop. It goes past that, and it's it's this thing. And the listening to it becomes so pristinely profound. And I imagine when you listen several times, do you find yourself at peace, Tressa? Is there a sense of well being as you listen? Is it like yes. the world can't hurt me? I, I I'm I'm. In, I imagine a good spleen feels a certain type of invincible. There, there is, there is a sense of safety and trust that no matter what I do, no matter where I am, no matter where I go, I am protected because my spleen will always tell me in the now what I need to do, how I need to move, how I need to act. Think about sports. Think about professional sports. How do those athletes know? just the right trajectory to move their body, just to right, do right. this, just to do that. I mean, all of that stuff is deeply, whether they, whether it's their spleen or they're amplifying it, all of that in the now knowing it, there is a sense of, like you said, Danny, yeah. um, um, what's the word that you just used? Uh, um, uh, it it like, can't touch me. They right? can't t- invincible. It's a certain amount of invincibility. Yes. Yeah. Now, now this is what I think about. This is what I find fascinating about all of the centers that we have defined. Just like you said, Moana, it's a frequency that your physical body is emitting from you, mm-hmm. sending it out into the world. So when you have a person with a defined spleen acting out as the not self version of them, they are increasing the fear in the planet. They're adding to the mm-hmm. fear on the planet. Now, when you have a splenic being who is actively wrapped up in their true self theme and they are feeling this immense amount of safety and trust and faith all of a sudden we are sending that out into a world filled with fear oh that's and that frequency cuts through like a knife right Mm. yeah we we conquer by being correct that's Mm, that's a good quote danny yep we Wow, that is going to do. And so that's it needs to get done that way. This experiment, Tressa, you know, we've talked about all these great things, but how about how would we tell a splenic person to even, how would we pitch, you know, go through the whole experiment that you need to be in? You can't just hear it. You know, you, you got to willingly enter into an experiment that says, I have yeah. this inner authority called a spleen. 
yeah. go ahead. Good habits. Um, can you? Yeah, oh, it starts oh. with having good habits. <laughs> can I? Can yeah. I? Can I? Uh, yeah, stop yeah, yeah. in the moment because here's yes. a clinic into intuition. If I don't say this, I'm going to completely yeah, lose it. Yeah. Right? Tell I'll us. forget it. Uh, working through hypnotherapy with so many different splenic, and I've at this point worked with hundreds and hundreds of different people through hypnotherapy, so many different splenic beings. And what I know at an unconscious level, the not self version, the dysfunctional patterns, think that fear is safe. And wow. that's why they get My wrapped drum. up in fear. <laughs> They think that fear is safe. And sometimes in a hypnotherapy session, I will have to remind my clients, fear isn't safe. Fear is fear. Peace is safe. Love right. is safe. Right. Trust right. is safe, right? right. Security right. is safe. These are the frequency. Now, now, there are two types of fear. There are fears that help us and there are fears that hurt us. And when we start to look for the fears that help us and use them as friends, all of a sudden we move through into peace really, really quickly and peace, satisfaction, appreciation, surprise. Those are the safest frequencies, love, safest frequencies on our planet. Absolutely. Because at the same time, when you're looking at that, Tressa, you, you really have an eloquent way of putting things. Uh, I know, right? I'm like, oh. yeah, it's really <laughs> dumbfoundingly good. <laughs> Well, I, I remember what I wanted to say. It's just that. Um, oh no! Tell fear us. Is, fear is informative. You're like fear's not safe, and it's not this. It's like no, fear's not safe. It's informative, and it's supposed yeah. to simply inform our intelligence. Fear makes us. It's a root of. It's a a primary root of actual intelligence. Even just like the low part of a wave or melancholy creates our emotional and our greater intelligence in many ways and consciousness. Fear does the same thing. It does yeah. same thing, Helpful but it's more fear. guttural. Helpful. Helpful. Yeah. Helpful fear. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It informs, yep. Until you get to, until you get to not self fear and not self fear hinders us instead yeah. of informing us, it holds us back and it stifles us. Yes. You know, so yeah. getting into an experiment, that's got to be hard for a splenic person to explain to them why they need to trust this going from zero <laughs> to here you go, yeah. kid. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you're crazy. So, Why here's, some I do that? here's some chewing gum. Go uh, take a walk. Walk it off. So, Teresa, yeah. I want to, I'm sure you have activities, but like when you start your day, what kind of activities do you do to ground yourself? This was, you know, saying yoga or deep breathing, but I know that you yeah. probably have your own way of doing it. Yeah, that's a really great question. I do everything I can to feel the frequency of peace. I, it doesn't matter. And, and again, at being a splenic being, some days I do yoga. Some mm -hmm. days I start off with meditation. A mm -hmm. lot of days I mantra. I mantra on my prayer beads. And as mm -hmm. a manifester, right, it's really important for us to stay connected with our throats and to be vocal when we want to. So mm -hmm. quite often I will mantra out loud. And some of my mantras, you know, I'll take a concept. <laughs> And yeah. in the beginning, I used to mantra a lot of, around safety. I don't do that anymore okay. because I feel very innately safe. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will, I will mantra things like ease. Like it's easy. It's easy. It's easy to, to, to get rest and it's easy to live as a manifester and it's easy to receive abundance and it's easy to be surrounded by people that Please. love me and it's easy. Right. And those just going into those flows of what I am and what I have and what I can, those things make me feel super peaceful. And I know that if I can find peace, I can hear my spleen very mm. clearly. So for me, it's not about connecting with my spleen. It's about connecting with myself. Yeah. That, and so many comes horrible along with moments it. today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the extracting so good. Do you have a favorite essential oil? That was another thing. It's like it just keeps you connected to your senses. You can like rub a little bit on your collarbone. Yeah, that is such a good question. And it's so funny. I um I really like jasmine and I really like lavender. And um I do smells are really and I'm a 44, right? I'm a whole I'm a trans center. I have the whole channel twice, and smells are really important to me. Um, and sometimes I use smells to ground me in. Um, I'm also a sixth color determination. So lights, lighting, uh, sunlight, natural light, lighting is also really important to me. Do you like to do any particular activities outdoors to like help you feel grounded? 
Oh just yes, over yeah, 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 yeah. Just a walk, yeah. like what yeah. would you like do? Um, I I go barefoot, so Walmart. sitting. Mm-hmm. Is sitting with grounding into the earth with my bare feet. Bye. If when it's warm outside, you know what I mean. Getting, mm. I really like to garden, so getting, touching the earth, being in the earth, stuff like that is all very um, peaceful. And again, you know, some of this stuff has to do with the aspects. You know, I have a whole channel of initiation, so Gate Twenty Five is super, you know, connected with the earth and so on and so forth. But yes. Yes to all of those things. <laughs> Yay, amazing. We, we made it through all of those. Into the experiment, lines. Tressa. How do we tell a splenic person to enter their experiment? So well, they come to us, they want to hear enough in the first place. And, or even if they don't, they're just in tune that there's something going on. I mean, we want to say, hey, you've got this inner authority that works like this. You know, I'm just yeah. trying to think that out loud. It's, um, we're explaining to somebody and and i love that he's there by the way it's great um oh, and we're I'm getting someone gonna... just to say hey listen we're going to plant you in this experiment and you're yeah. a manifester and we teach you that this piece is so important and then we have to teach you how did we teach you in the beginning Teresa, that that this splenic authority other than sending you ra uruhu tapes how did we teach you you know yeah. that this to be in the experiment you have to stay ground because it's so quick your experiment is so fast. Next to a splenic hit, a response is, 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 is sort of like a, a response is like a mwah, and a splenic hit's like. Kh. Right, right. It's called we're alive. We're being alive. So what Trust is referring to is she's going to, um, when you're getting into this experiment, you're choosing to hear what is it we've read for you. There are usually three things getting in the way, main ones. The first one is the open centers have a not self voice. So you have to be willing to, like she said, take them around with you. You know, there's these four open centers in my body graph. They have a not self voice. What are they? So you take them around so you keep seeing it over and over again. And then you have an inner authority. It's the spleen. It comes so fast. We, we have been going over what it's doing, what its purpose is, what it's for. So now you've got this huge trust. You've got to break through the idea that you don't trust it yet and experiment with watching it so that as you watch it, you learn to trust it. And how profound it is when you do, because truth sits there like this incredible beacon begging for you to now experience your signature and see things with the view and, and start answering that existential question. You know, what's my impact or, you know, who am I, you know, who are you? Yep. Yep. Right, right. Danny, you are a poet. Thank you. Um, yeah, only no, when you the, put me on the spot, man. Only when you put me on <laughs> let's the pull spot. it out of you. Um, what I had to do in the beginning is I really had to learn that um, fear wasn't safe. That right. that was the only way for me to actually start really start listening to my spleen because because what the not self mind thinks is that control is safe. Mm. Right. If I can control, if I can predict, if I can plan all of those things we were just talking about. And so I would witness myself grasping and right. manipulating and right. making excuses. Why? Right. Oh, I, I can't do it this way because of X, Y, and Z. Where in reality, it was because of fear. Right. And so I really had to confront and face some of the reasons why I was doing what I was doing and admit to myself that I wasn't certain open mm, right. and <laughs> I didn't know. And right. what would happen if I tried to do it another way? I mean, ultimately I, I think that I'm very much like, am I living the life of my dreams? Right. Because right. if I'm not, because life is giving me what I'm putting out. And so if I want to get something different, I have to put something out that's different. And what do I have to lose? Right. right. It's just an experiment. So, so it's this just is an how experiment. we, it's yeah. just an experiment. So really the very first thing is, uh, as it relates to getting into experiments, which I find myself talking about more and more, because it's the only thing that enters you in. Otherwise it's a thought experiment. Otherwise it's just thought. It doesn't reach application and it doesn't reach yeah. experiencing it. So come open, come receptive, yeah. you know, be, be still enough to hear and um, be present. Yeah, absolutely. Very present. 
Yeah, absolutely. I one of my new favorite things to say is that um, the mind can't feel the, the mind. All the mm. mind is capable of doing is conceptualizing. You measure. cannot conceptualize measure. You can't conceptualize yep. your experiment and be in your experiment at the same time. At the same time. Two different things. Oh. We're talking about the body. We're talking about the mind. So you got to pick your poison. You got to choose. Are you going to conceptualize it? And people who conceptualize it get really culty about human design. How many guys? Right. They're right, really culty. Right. They're really like, this is the right way. This is the wrong way. Right, Ross says right. it like this. It's very rigid about it because they haven't actually taken it into the body. Ross says, I shall not create a cult in my name and I diversify my vestings before I pass away. So there's five or six of you and no one can take it over. That's what Ross says. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, what a patriot, man. <laughs> yeah, he's like George Washington in that way. Um, yeah. So, but anyways, yeah, no, I, I see how this whole thing unfolds. I, I really can't wait to get more people into their experiment trust. It's such a joy. Um, the last couple of people that I've dealt with recently, you know them. And, and um, one of them's learning like a storm. Da, 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 da. It's so beautiful. And uh, um, I forget generator. I don't think it's manifesting generator. I think it's just generator. And, mm -hmm. and the other couple, uh, they saw, they saw, they saw, they saw, they saw, they saw. And it was just so beautiful. Um, couples, all of it. So yeah. out to the masses we go. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Yep. Okay. But also, so, so, so here's the thing. If you've got a couple of those centers, if you're emotionally defined and you're in an emotional neutral and you also have a spleen, well, when your emotions are neutral, now you can hear your spleen. Oh, right. If you're a splenic being and you have an ego, if your spleen isn't talking, sometimes your ego is. Sometimes your right. ego says, but this is what I want, right? So, so people, cool. right? And so, and so you can use the order of authority, people who are super open, like self-projected projectors, on the days where they have a defined spleen and emotional system, they're going to act like an emotional being, not a splenic being, because there's an order of authority. But if you know right. the order of authority and you recognize what that is inside of you for you, it's one of the most helpful things that I've, I've learned about authorities. So I don't know how you feel about that, Danny. No, it's, but... it's, you're saying it all exactly right.